good afternoon, I think it is May the 7th, and it wouldn't be right, we're walking down through the yard, it wouldn't be right if I didn't take a moment out to just reflect and say happy birthday to my friend Les. He became part of my life um, due to a difficult situation. Um, that with all involved, there's a duck on the pool. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I ended up, I fought for him for two years before I ever got to ever laid eyes on him. Um, he was a veteran. Um, when I found out about his situation, he was being... He was involved with people that he didn't need to be involved with. We'll leave it there. Um, so, at the point that I became involved, at, oh, that's wonderful. Cooper's not feeling well this morning. Um, the joys of older dogs. Anyway, um, we're just going to kind of survey the, the garden um, don't know how much of this we're gonna lose this weekend we're gonna cover everything anyway um, I was telling you about mr. Les at first um, when I first learned about him became part of his world Whew, that wind is chilly I, unbelievable unbelievable um, he uh, he was kind of the enemy so to speak for lack of a better way of putting it um, strange how that changes um, through The involvement um, with, uh, w with the situation and how I met him. Now we have some carrots and beets coming up. They actually need thinned out. I'm not sure. I think it may be natural selection. There's cold snap coming this week and coming next week. Anyway, um... I did a series on my channel about guardianship in Kentucky. Um, if you want to go and watch that, I think it's all on a playlist. Um, I didn't know him from a man on the moon once I realized the truth about his story or learned the truth about his story. I had no choice but to become involved. And when I say that I had no choice, um, this is a work in progress. I'm getting wood chips put down and weed cover. Um, we were gonna plant tomatoes and peppers this week, but hey, Kentucky decided, no, we're gonna frost again. Oh, sorry, still not completely over vertigo. Um, but anyway, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be night, to be, we all make mistakes in this life, and uh, Les had made some, and people that were involved with Les made some, and the pig bone, they have, um, We'll just say justice has been served, for lack of a better way of putting it. They have paid a penalty for what happened to him. But anyway, when I became involved in the situation, it took a lot of hard work, a lot of research, a lot of phone calls, um, and finally the day came that he ended up on my turf. And I was able to step in and fully become involved 
and go to court and become his legal guardian. And people, when I tell you this, I'm telling you this for a reason. I'm not bragging on what I did. Um, I had a wonderful team. I had to, he had dementia. Um, I had to, by court orders, which was agreed upon anyway, um, he had severe dementia. And the judge and I agreed that he needed to go into a nursing facility where the, he had 24 seven care. And so from the time that I was awarded legal guardianship to the time that he passed away he was in a nursing facility and I supervised his care um, I have to tell you that I had an amazing team because at the same time that this was going on um, my dad was sick and if you, you know the story about the mayor he battled cancer um, but he was stage four at the, you know, at the same time. And I was asked one time why I got involved with a total, with someone that, that was basically a total stranger to me. And the reason was very simple. He was somebody's dad. He was somebody's son. He was somebody's family member. Now, that being said, yes, I did try to reach out to his family. It didn't go well, um, and we'll just leave it at that. Um, thankfully, at the time that it didn't go well, I already had been appointed as his guardian legally, and there was nothing that anybody else could do. And again, we'll leave that there because that's ugly, and I don't, you know, I don't want that. It, 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 the situation was what it was. It was an awful situation all the way around for everybody involved. Anyway, I just wanted to take a few moments today to tell you that no matter the situation, if you find someone that's homeless, especially a veteran, don't wait for the government to get involved you can get involved. It took, mm, it took me about a month, give or take, when I decided, no, it took me two months, I t I'm sorry, when I decided to become his legal guardian and um, to get him proper care, um, to get his funds to go for proper care to get everything straightened, straightened up in his life and, and to where he had a better quality of life. And it wasn't hard. Um, it was, it, it, some things were a little daunting um, as far as the finances went because, well, Medicaid. And <laughs> that, was, that was an issue, but um, in the end, it was one of, he became like another uncle to me. Um, and, um, even though I knew he wasn't well, uh, he did have some times that he was lucid. Um, I did have his flag. I, when he passed away, I had no choice but to have him cremated and I buried him in the same cemetery that my father is buried in, um, which the anniversary of that will be in about seven days. Um, his last birthday, I did not get to celebrate with him because there, there was a, he died seven months after my dad did. Um, and there was, we were at a memorial for my dad and it was six months in, and I just couldn't. So I didn't know, you know, he was doing well. I didn't know that within a few short days that he was going to take, he was going to be gone. Um, but I guess the other than honoring him today by telling his story, people 
these veterans, whether whether they are National Guard, whether they've never seen a, a, a bit of combat, um, whatever, they signed a piece of paper to lay their life down for you and your freedom. So the least that we can do as Americans is to help take care of them after they come home. Because some of them come home and they don't have the support that they need or they have problems that society can't solve. Um, but we can intervene. It takes a little thing called love, a little thing called respect, and a whole lot of just pretend like it was somebody in your family. Um, and and that's that was what what did what did it for me. I I hoped that if the situation had been differently, and it was my father that was um, the one that was homeless, had dementia, was sick, was being mistreated, that somebody would step in. Um, so I stepped in, and I encourage you to do that. I, if I have the chance to do it again, and I'm able to, I will. Um, I haven't had the opportunity. I'm not as able-bodied as I was then, but it doesn't mean that I wouldn't try. So, y'all remember, we're just looking at my grass for some strange reason, um, but y'all have a great day. I'm going to go up. We're, it's cold. It's going to be cold tonight, and, you know, we're looking at a freeze warning um, in Kentucky, and I'm just kind of going, are you kidding me? So, y'all have a good day. Remember, I am the mayor's daughter, and I love you all. See you, bye.